an enslaved man that was pivotal in the settling of Kentucky. That's pretty cool, huh? That's cool that most people don't know about him. Man, he was an amazing man, wasn't he? He was. Hey, everybody, this is Russ Carson Jr., one of the genealogists here at Family Tree Nuts. And we're in the cemetery here at what they call Traveler's Rest, which was the uh, burial ground right outside the home of uh, Isaac Shelby, our first governor. And I'm here with a special guest. Do you want to tell them who you are? I'm Sue Baber Castle, and I'm my family's historian. Awesome. That's awesome. So we're at the gravesite. That grave right there is actually Isaac Shelby, our first governor of Kentucky, right. and the hero of uh, the Battle of Kings Mountain, where the Scots Irish uh, whooped the <laughs> whooped the Tories and the British on top of the mountain there. But uh, um, the reason we're here is not for Isaac Shelby today, but uh, we're here for another guy. What's his name? Jack Hart. Jack Hart. He was also known by a couple other names, Big Hart, Captain Jack, and um, Hart's Jack. Okay, those are pretty cool names, you those know, are. kind of thing. That's so right. uh, he he was not he was also uh, the slave and bodyguard for Nathaniel Hart. Yes. He was part of the Transylvania Company, yep. the, actually the lead negotiator, which placed Jack Hart at Watauga for the signing of the treaty with the Indians. That's incredible. That's incredible. That would have been in March. 14th of uh, 1775. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and who's Nathaniel Hart to you? Nathaniel Hart to me is my five times great grandfather. Wow. Five times great grandfather. So that's why we're relevant to have Sue here with us today uh, to know the story very well. It's a family story that's passed down. Right. So I guess after he was there at the signing of the uh, at, 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 at Fort Watauga right. uh, mm -hmm. to purchase Kentucky from the Cherokee Indians, right. He accompanied Daniel Boone, I guess, with his axemen. That's what they say. He would have accompanied Daniel Boone after the signing of the treaty and come on in and um, we're told help to pick out the location of the fort. That's pretty cool, that right? That is cool. And I know he was known to be a heck of a shot too, wasn't he? He was. He, he was trusted enough to have his own rifle yep. that he um, was a good hunter. Yeah, Absolutely. he was known for that uh, kind of thing like that. He wasn't, we often think of someone that's someone's slave, and we're definitely not defending slavery here, but what we're saying is, is that he was a good friend of Nathaniel Hart. He was. And uh, a good, he was very trusted. He was that, a trusted you know. servant of Nathaniel Hart, sure. enough to where he traveled with him everywhere, and he, um, he would have entrusted him with a rifle. Yeah. That's awesome. Matter of fact, speaking of rifle, he was actually given a rifle, wasn't he? He was. He was given a rifle by Nathaniel's brother, David Hart. Yep. And um, he, being Jack, actually loaned his rifle at the Battle of Blue Licks. He okay. was in Boonesboro at the time. They left him he, behind to they, guard. Uh, yes, Jack didn't go because he wanted. He guarded the fort, and they sent him, a, an unknown gentleman, to Blue Licks with Jack's rifle. Yep. The gentleman returned, but his rifle did not. Gee, thanks. Yeah, you I know, know really. But <laughs> thankfully, the man survived. He may survive. But he lost his rifle. Right, 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 right. And I know that later on, though, uh, um, and was it the eight, 1840s? It was. It was into the 1840s. There was a state resolution presented to the legis Kentucky State Legislature to replace the rifle, the long rifle that Jack Hart would have lost. Right. And they granted that it be given to him, but cost no more than thirty dollars. Okay. That's great. And, and and we know about all these things because of the writings of the letters that the hearts had. You know, there's much of documentation about this particular man, Jack. There, there but, is. Uh, there is. There were several people, uh, Dr. Butler and um, several others, that had gone to like the Woodford County Library and other libraries that have family files sure. that tell you the stories. And there's several letters that were written by Nathaniel Hart Jr. that documented the fact that an older, aged black man was with him that sure. documented them that being Jack. That's awesome. And that rifle stayed in the family in the family for a number of years. It stayed with the family even after Jack passed away. It stayed in the home at Woodford County at Spring Hill with Nathaniel Jr. The home of Nathaniel Hart's Jr. Jr. That's right, in Woodford County. But when the Civil War happened, the, the area, his home happened to have been attacked by soldiers and the rifle was stolen. Yeah, General Burbridge, the butcher of Kentucky. That's right. A Union general was camped out there and they stole the rifle. They so. did. They did a lot of damage to the whole area and yeah. stole his rifle. And it was displayed mm -hmm. on a prominent place in the home of Nathaniel Hart Jr. It was. And so was the descendants of Jack where they were still with the family that's of right. uh, Nathaniel that's, Hart that's Jr. Right. So, that's exactly so right. you know it was a close-knit unit, uh, the slaves and the uh, the owners that exactly. were there. So, so the weapon was uh, stolen and it was disappeared for a long time until a new resolution was presented in 2004. In like 2004, there was a resolution and I believe finally passed in 2005 yep. that they do a replacement long rifle for Jack 
Yeah. And it ended up being presented to a gentleman who, re who did a reenactment yeah. of Jack, sure. and they marched it over to the Thomas Clark uh, Library in Frankfurt, where it hung on display. That's and, pretty cool. And that is very cool. That's cool. They couldn't find mm -hmm. a descendant of them, but they found a man. I think his name was Darren Battle. That, That's right. Uh, That's the right. student at Kentucky State. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, they're, they're received reenacted. it, and, <laughs> and, the, and the weapon is still there in the uh, in the mm -hmm. museum there. But right, uh, right. something else that's pretty cool about him is that he actually had an image. He ha he actually had a painting made. Very unusual for yeah. the time, but they did have a portrait that was painted of uh, Jack Hart, and it did hang in Nathaniel Hart Jr.'s home again at Spring Hill. Sure, and. Um, and there's actually a wood carving, which wow. I have found an image in a book that shows the picture wow. of Jack Hart. Wow. We can't see the painting because unfortunately the painting, along with the painting of Isaac Shelby, yep. died, uh, it, they got burned in a oh. fire in around the 1900s. That's Some stinks. say right I, before, some say 1802. That, that's aggravating, 1902. isn't it? So, yeah. So yeah. I that think that painting lost. was even on display at the World's Fair in Chicago. It was kind of in thing. Chicago, yeah. So, But now it's disappeared. Now it's gone. You know what I thought about yeah. is why hadn't somebody at least taken a photograph of that of that painting? At you know? that time, they could so, have. That's you know, right. Absolutely. That would have been amazing. So. But we do have that wood carving that is in, a, in print in a book. So we know that Jack died, I guess, about in 1844. And uh, they say that he's buried somewhere right here in this cemetery. They're about 1844, but uh, Nathaniel Hart III mm -hmm. actually wrote a letter to Lyman Draper that talked about an aged black man who was with him about 1846. Okay. So he was right in that area. Sure. That sure. time frame. But Sometime we believe before 1850. Right. He would have. And yes. They say he's buried somewhere here in the cemetery. We've got some shots that we're, of course, showing you the cemetery. It's full of uh, Shelby's and McDowell's, the family of. Ephraim McDowell. Ephraim, that's right. That's know, right. Kind of Isaac Shelby's daughter married Ephraim McDowell, which would make her a granddaughter of Nathaniel Hart. All married connected. Ephraim McDowell. All, all connected, connected. And all mm -hmm. connected to you. Correct. Yeah, which makes you Kentucky royalty, I guess, right? So, <laughs> well, so. Just proud of my roots. <laughs> Absolutely. It's some just great very roots. proud of my roots. That's Absolutely. great. So yes. um, it's really neat that uh, we're at a spot where uh, somebody that had so much, uh, seen so many things and uh, you know, it's a, a black man that was enslaved. One thing we forgot to mention, he did actually get his freedom. He did. After the turn of the century, 1803 or so, there was a, an emancipation of him yeah. by uh, Nathaniel Hart Jr., yep. who uh, freed him, and it is signed by Ephraim McDowell and, um, and Isaac Shelby. Yeah, they were present for his emancipation papers. The, mm -hmm. the governor... You know, exactly. the, the, the famous frontier surgeon, the first ovarian cyst removal, uh, famous people. So you right. can tell he was a real influential guy. Exactly. You know, in the first place. So that's really cool that they cared that much to, to be around for that thing. So that's but, right. Uh, that's right. It shows how much they respected and admired the, the man himself. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else you'd like to say at all? I just think his story is very important to, for people to understand sure. that it's not just what we have been told that there are so many more people that were critical in the founding of Kentucky and yeah. they need to be recognized. Absolutely. And I think I think uh, Hart's Jack or Jack Hart, however you want to refer to him, should be one of those. He's a Kentucky hero. He is a Kentucky hero. He really is. Little so. known, but maybe after this, he'll be better known. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I so, hope so too. Well, thanks for bringing us here. Like I said, we're at the uh, Isaac Shelby's graveyard here and or Isaac Shelby's uh, cemetery. And uh, where supposedly uh, Jack Hart, the famous uh, Kentucky pioneer, early Kentucky settler, uh, and uh, f formerly enslaved man, was, is buried. Sorry. And uh, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. <laughs> <laughs>